generations who have gone before us. They need to have the those who served, suffered, and died for the flag we honor today. May their legacies empower these soon to be airmen to soar with the mission ahead of them. Gracious God, allow us all At this part of the ceremony, the military training instructors will distribute the Venerable Airman's coin and for the first time, distinct Space Force coins to our Space Force graduates. 
The lore of military coins has many colorful suspected origins. However, a popular story stems from World War I, where American volunteers formed flying squadrons in France during the Great War. One of the volunteers was a wealthy lieutenant who took great pride in his service and had medallions cast in bronze, with his squadron's emblem on them. He gave those medallions to every member of his unit. Not long after, one of the pilots was shot down behind enemy lines and was captured by a German patrol. The German forces confiscated the pilot's possessions except for the pilot's medallion that he wore around his neck. While in confinement in a small French village, the captured pilot took advantage of a nighttime bombardment by the Allies. He donned civilian clothes and escaped after crossing the front lines to safety. He came across a French outpost where he was initially thought to be a saboteur until he showed them his unit coin. The French forces recognized the unit emblem, and instead of any harsher treatment, he received a bottle of wine. Today, several military units have developed their own coins and specific rules for them. Many organizations give out their unit coins to recognize outstanding performances and achievements. The coins the airmen and space professionals receive today are unique in that they originate here at the gateway to the Air Force and are only given to those who complete this rigorous course of instruction. On one side of the airman's coin, the original emblem of the Air Force resides as envisioned by General Henry Hap Arnold, one of the first military aviators and later commander of the Army Air Forces in World War II. Beneath the emblem, the year 1947, the birth date of the United States Air Force, and around the rim of the coin, the core values of the Air Force, integrity first, service before self, and excellence in all we do. Inscribed on the other side of the coin is the newly recognized emblem of the Air Force, a symbol that honors the heritage of our past and represents the promise of our future. The emblem retains the core elements of the Henry Hap Arnold emblem, the Arnold wings, and the star within a circle. The modern effect of the emblem reflects our air and space force today and into the future. Inscribed in a half circle above the contemporary Air Force emblem is the Air Force motto, Aim High, Fly, Fight, Win. And on the border of the coin, a reminder to all who see this is inscribed, awarded on the occasion of becoming an airman in the world's greatest air force. The space professional coin also has a distinctive design. On one side, it displays the original emblem of the space force, the Delta, which was first used by space units in 1961 and honors the heritage of the United States Space Force. Beneath the emblem is the year 2019, the birth date of the United States Space Force. Inscribed on the other side of the coin is the Space Force motto, Semper Supra, which translates to always above. This represents the Space Force's role in establishing, maintaining, and preserving our nation's dominance and freedom of operations in the space domain. On the coin's border is a commemorative inscription that reads, awarded on the occasion of becoming a charter member of the United States Space Force.
I am deeply grateful to each and every one of you for the love and support you have given them, and especially for your presence here today. Over the last two months, these young men and women were under the care of some of the most talented, dedicated, motivated, and selfless people you will ever meet, our military training instructors. At great personal sacrifice, yes. At great personal sacrifice, not only to themselves, but to their spouses and children. They were up early in the morning and stayed late at night, working tirelessly with a relentless pursuit of excellence to take 660 individuals and turn them into the amazing team of professional military warriors that stand in front of you today. Please join me in thanking them for their incredible work. After the Battle of Gettysburg, the deadliest battle of our Civil War, where over 7,000 men were killed, and 44,000 wounded or missing. President Abraham Lincoln dedicated that hall of ground with his famous Gettysburg Address, in which he stated, from these honored dead, we take increased devotion to that cause for which they gave the last full measure of devotion, that we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation, under God, shall have a new birth of freedom, and that government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth. To our newest airmen, never forget that you are now dedicated to that same cause of defending this nation's most precious freedoms. One of these trainees, now airmen, Ask me what advice I could give them for how to succeed in life. I'm surely not wise enough to truly answer that question. But Winston Churchill, who is the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom during the darkest days of World War II, said the following two things. Success is not final. Failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that counts. And he also said, never, 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 never give up. General George Patton said, accept the challenges so that you can feel the exhilaration of victory. You all accepted the challenge of basic military training. Each of you overcame failures, learned from their mistakes, picked yourselves up, and continued on with courage, which led you to this great day. You didn't give up, and today you are feeling that well-deserved exoneration of victory. My Eagles, and now fellow airmen, please know that it has been my greatest honor to be your first squadron commander in your Air Force journey. I am proud to serve with each of you, and I send you into the world knowing that you have the moral courage to be your best self, full of the same pride, character, and excellence that you learn here. You are all truly second to none. Always remember, we are one team. Congratulations. Thank you, Lieutenant Colonel Beth Rosario. Graduate of this class. The top graduate is from Flight 516, Airman Michael Milano.
Egypt, New Jersey, and joined the Air Force to become an aircraft structural maintainer. In the stands cheering are his wife, Ashley Milano, his parents, Ken and Natalie, and his grandmother, Bonnie. His recruiter is Technical Sergeant Amber Pennell from McGuire Air Force Base. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand as a sign of unity as our top graduate leads us through the Airman's Creed. Instructors, place your flights at attention. graduating squadron, led by Technical Sergeant Harold Snyder. Our commander of airmen is Technical Sergeant Stephen Shorter. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the sounding of retreat and remain standing for the playing of the National Anthem.
The flag stands for peace, honor, truth, justice, and freedom. In the armed forces of the United States, during the ceremony of retreat, the flag is lowered, folded in a triangle fold, and kept under watch throughout the night as a tribute to our nation's honored dead. The next morning, it is brought out at the ceremony of reverie. The flag has been torn to strips and used as bandages for wounded combatants on the battlefield. It has been placed in the trembling arms of a grieving parent at the grave of their fallen son or daughter. It is flown at half staff to honor our military members. The flag is flown in every battle of every war for more than 200 years. It is flown at Valley Forge, Shiloh, and Gettysburg. It was there at San Juan Hill, the trenches of France, in the Aragon Forest, in Zio, Rome, and on the beaches of Normandy. It was waved at Okinawa, Korea, Vietnam, Somalia, Kuwait, Iraq, and in Afghanistan. The flag has been burned, torn, and trampled on the streets of countries that America has helped to set free. Yet, it remains invincible. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing for the playing and singing of the Air Force songs. Congratulations on achieving this historic milestone that marks the beginning of your career. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain in your seating area. The graduates will be dismissed momentarily. Thank you. 